It's a chilly night in Rotterdam in Holland, but in one city centre haunt, it's always summer. At the Baja Beach Club, there's a new attraction for clubbers. It means they have no need for cash or cards. Joe Van Garlen is managing director of the club, and his idea has proved a big hit for the business. When we started this uh, one and a half year ago, uh, we have people just want to do it for fun, do it because it's new. It's an amazing little device, which can mean there's no need for proof of ID or money to get in. It can all be done with tiny computer chips, implanted in the flesh of clubbers' arms. So what do these chips look like? You've got one here, have you? Yeah, I got one here for you. It's, uh, like I told you, it's, it's unbelievable. Uh, got to be careful that I don't lose it. It's like a rice thing. It's yeah, that's tiny, isn't it? Really tiny. Yeah? Hey, hey how's good? Yeah, lekker. Hello. Hey, I'm with him. All right. So this is the scanning. This is scanning. Normally you pay over here. Right. But now I've got the chip. Okay. For clubbers with a chip, no cash is required, and getting in is simple. And over there is my picture. Yeah, right there. Yeah. Yeah. Straight away. Straight away. And there's another benefit. When buying drinks, instead of paying with money, they can simply have the chips in their arms scanned. Their accounts with the club are automatically debited. Chipping may be popular, but isn't it all a bit intrusive? When they uh, ask us for a chip, you don't have to fill in your address, your disease, <laughs> everything you got, or you're married or not married. Only you, we want to have your name and the amount of money is up. That's, that's the only thing we ask. And that's why everybody is... Uh, Everybody knows that it's, uh, that it's OK for your privacy. Plenty of people here seem happy to be implanted with computer chips. So one day, will we all embrace this kind of monitoring technology? It's so simple. I think that within 20 years, when you get born, you will get a chip. So that's a vision of the future. But are you worried how much your life at home and at work is being monitored and recorded already? You may not realise just how much you're being watched right now. In London and in most big British cities, surveillance is part of our everyday lives. There's no escape on the bus. Everyone is filmed by cameras. And if I was driving, I'd be monitored there too. Every day, hundreds of thousands of number plates are scanned. When using the phone, every call is logged and kept for years by telecoms companies. Every email I send is recorded and kept by the internet providers. And when I use a credit card, every penny I spend on this is logged and analysed by the financial data companies. Also, every time I use a loyalty card in a supermarket, they scrutinise what I buy. Thanks. It does feel sometimes that Big Brother is watching everything you do. You can buy the argument that this is all for our own good. It's for a better Britain, it's for a safer individual, a safer society, a more manageable society. You can buy that argument if you want. I don't, because what I believe about surveillance is that ultimately it is used against individuals, not for them. Not everybody would agree with that. On London's tube network, surveillance cameras are everywhere, helping to keep the business running smoothly and safely. The London Underground system has many more cameras than most other systems across the world. Across the whole tube network, we have of the order of 6,000 closed circuit television cameras. That is doubling over the next five years with the major investment uh, programme we have on the underground to about 12,000 cameras. 
And there's another, less obvious monitoring system on the tube. The prepaid tickets used by many Londoners, called Oyster Cards, can also track and record their journeys. The information is useful for planning the service, but it's also useful for the police. Last year, they demanded records of more than 200 individual trips to track suspects. There are very strict guidelines that are required by the police to obtain this information, which actually ensure that the release of this data to the police or law enforcement agencies is very strictly controlled. Um, it only happens in extreme circumstances, but of course it is valuable, very valuable to the police in those particular circumstances. Now, most of us will be happy for the police to be given every help in catching criminals and terrorists. But could the Oyster card open the door to more surveillance? The Oyster card, when it was first uh, proposed, we raised our hands in despair and said, look, you realise what's happening here is you are creating a mechanism across the entire London transport system that has the potential to track everyone's movements. And when that happens, authorities are going to want to use the information. You give information... Um, to any authority and everybody else wants it too. Leaving city centre cameras and swipe cards behind, we might think we're out of sight of Big Brother. We'd be wrong. We're all consumers and with money to spend, we're going to be watched. This business has the ability to track and locate you within seconds wherever you are in Britain or Western Europe, whatever the time of the day or night. Now, it sounds sinister, but millions of us pay them to do it. At the RAC Breakdown Centre in Walsall, they are experts at monitoring their customers. Good morning, Ford RAC. You're speaking to Rachel. How can I help? The RAC handles 10,000 calls a day. So how do they find all those broken down cars? As Simon Sheldon Wilson told me, they can track the signal from mobile phones. How do you use somebody's mobile phone to find them then, locate them when they've broken down? We submit a request into the network and that will take three or four seconds to come back with an approximate position of the mobile telephone. So can we do this with this phone and find out where you are then? Yeah, let's, so let's put your phone number in yeah. there. My phone number's there. If we click on search... Um, it's a map of the Midlands. Hearing it, yep. Yeah. And we zoom straight in, you can see can now I, where we three are. Three seconds later, we're right by the M6, and that's you, isn't it? That's my mobile phone, yep, and that's where we are, just on the M6. That's there. pretty amazing technology, isn't it, to be able to find people like that? It's, it's fantastic. I don't think people realise that, that capability exists for a motor organisation like ourselves at the moment. The RAC always asks customers permission to trace their calls. But if they can do it so easily, perhaps there's nothing to stop state or corporate snoopers from doing the same. Now surveillance is part of the infrastructure, the urban infrastructure. You don't, for instance, create a telephone system or a communication system without having surveillance capability built into it. So all of this means that now surveillance is infinitely more uh, intrusive and extensive than it's ever been before. Surveillance is even a feature of many modern cars, as RAC patrolman Brett Hunt explained. Some hire car companies install anti-theft tracking devices in their vehicles without drivers knowing. There's a lot of tracking systems already out there. Um, a lot of hire companies um, already use tracking systems so they can monitor where their vehicles are at any given time. So you're being tracked by satellite without even knowing? You're being it. tracked by satellite without even knowing, yes. And that's a prospect that troubles some people. Could a technology introduced for good business reasons end up threatening our privacy? The driver doesn't have a choice as to whether their movements in a car are tracked and located or not. Of course it may be beneficial in terms of an accident, but we don't have accidents all the time. Sometimes we, we may want to turn these technologies off. We may want to n not want people to know exactly where we're going and why. So, as consumers, there seems no way to avoid being watched and tracked. But what about while we're at work? For call centre employees, there's no escape from prying eyes. Call Media makes technology to monitor every moment of the working day. 
Rufus Gregg is the company's managing director.